I'm pretty sure those fucking hit you, but okay. Okay, call any of those, are you? We've all had situations like this. The rules of airsoft are pretty cut and dry. You get shot, you call yourself out. You're expected to rely on more than just your sense of touch to know if you've been hit. Sight and hearing are just as important. However, things tend to be more complicated. There are a lot of factors that can impair a player's ability to notice that they have been hit. When this occurs, it is called a false hit. And it's different from regular cheating because a false hit is not a deliberate refusal to follow the rules. So today, I'll be going over what causes false hits to happen and what you can do to overcome them, as well as avoid becoming part of the problem yourself. I'll start off by talking about the causes of false hits. The first one is easily the most common, clothing. Clothing can silently absorb the force of a BB impact. We've all seen rental players wearing hoodies, winter jackets, or multiple layers of clothing because they overestimated how much it hurts to get hit. In reality, it just makes them into bulletproof chunguses. That doesn't mean this never happens with more experienced players. Seasoned players often wear BDUs that are meant to have a baggy fit on the wearer's body, and they are sometimes made from stiff fabric that only enhances their armor-like properties. Not to mention that some players wear casual clothing underneath their BDUs, which is another example of a player wearing multiple layers. Speaking of armor, another common cause of false hits is the gear worn by the target. Plate carriers, chest rigs, mag pouches, and helmets are all examples of equipment that is made of tough material by design. As a result, they can function like actual body armor and make BB impacts painless, even from a few inches away. See? Nothing. Sure, a person wearing a plate carrier can hear a BB hit the carrier in a quiet setting, but there are a lot of things that make enough noise to drown that out in the middle of a skirmish. Speaking of which, let's go over the things that can impair your ability to hear a BB hit you. Chief among them is movement. You won't hear a BB impact if you're loudly barreling through the bush with the wind in your ears. Some guns make enough noise to drown out BB impacts. Teammates shouting at each other to communicate can do this as well. I have the power of God. Dylan, what's the water in your pants in front of your wee wee? Where the fuck is he? <laughs> go, 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 go! Over half. Oh, that one gave me a fucking haircut, Jesus. Get the fuck off my lawn! Don't scare me! I poop easily! Fucking normies! Get off my board! Fuck Susan Wojcicki, she ruined that website. Or maybe they're just dumbasses. That being said, both the shooting and the shouting will cause more problems on indoor fields where sounds can echo as they bounce off of walls and ceilings. Radio chatter can do this as well, but you shouldn't leave the volume that high to prevent it from giving away your position in the first place. Headgear like toques, balaclavas, coat hoods, certain types of helmets, and even radio headsets can partially deafen the wearer as well, worsening all of the aforementioned sound factors. It's mainly an issue that occurs on indoor fields, but lighting can cause false hits as well. BBs are made of glossy white plastic, so they're easy to see when they're put up against a background of colors that contrast with the white. However, if the background consists of pale drywall or snow banks, BBs become very difficult to see in flight.
you might be convinced that your shots are connecting with the intended target, when in reality they are being carried off course by the wind, or your sight just hasn't been zeroed correctly. You can mitigate this by confirming your sight is dialed in properly beforehand, and using a weapon light if you're playing indoors. Your angle of attack matters a lot as well. If you manage to ambush an enemy from behind and your first few shots hit them in the back, which is covered by a backpack, they're going to hear you firing at them, assume you missed, and head for cover. When in the right hands, ghillie suits can be very effective at camouflaging the wearer. However, they can also completely nullify and silence BB impacts at medium and long ranges. As such, they are notorious for granting the wearer a Master Chief-like ability to unknowingly absorb ridiculous amounts of enemy fire. Not so much at close range, though. Peanut butter on my balls, let the dog lick it. Next up is the good old fight or flight response. If a target is already fueled by some adrenaline, the pain of being hit may trigger a fight or flight response, causing them to react as if you narrowly miss them rather than calling themselves out like they should have. If it's a flight response, they'll run to cover. If it's a fight response, they'll shoot back. This is usually done by young or inexperienced players who are still learning the rules and etiquette of the game, so there's not much point in getting overly butthurt about it. The focus of a player's attention can cause similar issues. If a player becomes too focused on performing a certain task, they'll get tunnel vision and unintentionally ignore stimuli that is below a given threshold of intensity. If that was too much nerd shit for you, let me explain with this clip. I get so dialed in on taking out the player in front of me that his buddy can sneak around on my right and get close enough to get a knife kill on me, but I'm so dead set on taking out the first guy that I just assumed that it was a branch rubbing against my hip, and he had to tap me on the shoulder and tell me I was out. Oh. My bad. Last but not least is distance. BBs decelerate pretty quickly, so if your target is far enough, there's a good chance they won't even feel it, especially in combination with the other factors I've listed. The slower the BB, the less likely the target is to feel it, and the less noise it's going to make when it hits something. However, the more common reason distance leads to false hits is because the shooter can't clearly see their BBs in the first place. Come on, that's hitting you. It's hard to say. I can see it hitting them. It's not? I've lost count of how many times I've been accused of cheating when the accuser's shots were actually landing a meter or two in front of me. Now that you know what causes false hits, here are three steps you can take to overcome them. Step 1. Enter the soup zone. The easiest and most important method is to close the distance to the target. Like I said before, distance exaggerates every other cause of false hits. So it goes without saying that getting closer directly translates to fewer false hits and it also makes steps 2 and 3 much easier. How close should you get? Within your soup zone. Take a soup can and set it up at roughly chest height. Then step back about 25 paces, draw a line in the dirt with your feet, and take one shot at the can. If you miss the can, take one or two paces forward and try again. If you hit, stand the can back up and try again from the same distance. If you hit five to 10 shots in a row, then take a step back. Repeat this process until you roughly know the maximum distance where you can consistently hit that can in one shot. Any target that is within that distance is within your soup zone, because if it's bigger than a soup can, it's pretty much screwed. While charging at the enemy to bring them within your soup zone is exciting and usually beneficial to the team, Get it! 
it isn't productive if your team needs to stay put to defend an objective or stage an ambush. If you can't bring yourself to the target, let the target come to you. In defense or ambush scenarios, wait until the target enters your soup zone before shooting at them. Just remember, whether you're blitzkrieging rental players or dunking on chair softening boomers from the bushes Viet Cong style, shooting at anything more than 15 meters beyond the edge of your soup zone shouldn't be relied on to do more than just suppress the enemy. Step 2. Hit them where it hurts. There's a lot of things that a player can wear that can make BB impacts unnoticeable, so it'll make your life a whole lot easier if you don't waste ammo on body parts that are covered by those things. During the pre-game briefing, take note of what the other players are wearing. This will help you determine where you should hit them. You normally want to aim for the torso because it's big and easy to hit, but if your target is wearing any of the equipment I mentioned earlier, shooting them in the chest or back isn't going to work. So when you see someone wearing said equipment, exercise Isaac Clark marksmanship. If that reference went over your head, that means shoot the limbs. Alright, see? It's not so bad. <laughs> However, limbs can be protected just as easily as the torso, so it's good to know some other places to aim for. Body parts that are more touch sensitive are usually reliable weak points at close and medium range where your BBs still hit with some punch. These body parts include the hands, neck, butt cheeks, and the groin, but for obvious ethical reasons, that last one should be reserved strictly for targets that have been thoroughly proven to be deliberate cheaters. Uh, the, Shout the guy cheating wearing like almost all black. Yeah, no, there's some dudes that just are refusing to fucking call it. It's fine. Reason they hung up, I, I watched my BBs bounce off his chest. He wasn't wearing a plate for Just push the full auto. Push the full auto. Like full auto in the face. Just like full auto him in the face. In the pee pee? Yeah. Or the pee pee. Only in the pee pee. Unfortunately, all of these body parts can be easily protected or difficult to hit. Any bare skin, or skin covered only by a thin layer of fabric, such as a shirt, are good areas to aim for instead. If all else fails, shoot them in the face. Even if their full face protection makes it painless, the sight and sound of a BB crashing into your mask is quite startling and likely to disrupt the target's concentration and make them much more likely to call themselves out. Getting hit in the sides, top, and back of the head stings pretty good too, so go for headshots when your target isn't wearing a helmet. So remember, if shooting them in the torso doesn't work, shoot the limbs. If shooting the limbs doesn't work, shoot the squishy bits. And if you can't hit the squishy bits, go for the head and face. Step 3. Shoot them again. Once you've identified the weak spot you're going to shoot at, start shooting at it and don't stop until the target calls hit. If the target is turning out to be extra difficult to take down, flip your selector to fully autistomatic because it's cowabunga time. Sorry. Just make sure you avoid overshooting them by paying attention to the target's body language and firing in short bursts so that you know to cease fire when they've called it. I realize that steps 2 and 3 might seem a bit brutal or excessive, but that's kind of the point. Most players, myself included, can't be relied upon to notice they've been hit with sight and sound alone. So your goal is to startle them or cause them pain sufficient to disrupt their focus so that they'll call the hit. Or to put it in simpler terms, you want to take the wind out of their sails. Airsoft is a sport where you shoot each other with low-power BB guns. If you weren't expecting a little pain and discomfort, you must be very, very lost and you should ask an adult to call your parents to take you home. Now that you know what to do to avoid landing false hits on your enemies, here's some things you can do so that your enemies don't get as many false hits on you. Ditch the extra layers. If it's warmer than 15 degrees outside, you don't need to wear more than a long sleeve shirt. Ditch the BDUs as well. There are other ways to camouflage yourself. Buy a long sleeve shirt in a camo pattern that matches your field, and a pair of cargo pants in whatever color works best with the camo. If you normally use a plate carrier or a chest rig, swap it out for a battle belt setup. It won't cover up your torso, and you'll be able to feel more hits. I should clarify that if you don't want to do the things I just listed, it doesn't make you a bad player or a borderline cheater. 
These are just some tricks I've noticed over the years and I wanted to share them. If you stuck around this long, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I hope I've made it more apparent that while intentional cheating in this sport is unacceptable, it isn't always a black and white issue because it's often unintentional. Hell, I've been told that I've been guilty of a few false hits myself. I have plans to make a video on how to know when a player is cheating on purpose, but I need to get some footage of an actual cheater first, and the field I play at doesn't have many of those, so it might be a while. In the meantime, stick around for more airsoft guides, reviews, and maybe some gameplay, all of which will be subject to the same level of procrastination as this video. 